It's a beautiful fall right now and our friends at Manscaped want to make sure it's beautiful when your pants fall. Don't let the trees be the only thing dropping their excess leaves and give your trunk the look it deserves with the leaders in male grooming and their fourth generation performance package. Boys, get your baby makers ready for a cuffing season like no other and join the 4 million men worldwide using Manscaped. Make sure you go to manscaped.com for 20% off and free shipping using the code TRUEFOOTY20. Enjoy the podcast. Uh, in fact... I'll, I'll do another tangent here before we progress. Uh, who do you think is the most frustrating team this season? Ooh, Port Adelaide, I'd yeah, okay. have to say, with the start of the season, yeah. considering how they've been the last few years, you thought they'd still have an opportunity to sustain that. Mm-hmm. And that sort of completely imploded, and they've sort of starting to turn it around, but it might be too little too late by now. I guess that could be frustrating because it's like... Oh, so we, we do have the potential. <laughs> do you know, we haven't just fallen apart, so why do we start the season five weeks late? I can see why yeah, that would yeah. be frustrating. The, I'll obviously just touched on Richmond. I think I've got another contender as well, but Richmond at times have looked fantastic. Getting five goals up against Sydney, only to drop the game in what has ultimately cost them a top eight spot at the moment and where it's tight, yeah. uh, that is incredibly frustrating. And I think at times they've looked very, very good and finals quality. Yeah. I think unlike last year, we're seeing a situation where teams outside the eight, to me, justifiably look like finalist teams whereas I remember saying last year we had six or seven and the fact that West Coast was seventh or eighth for most of last year showed how weak the the um, the talent was yeah. around the middle part of the ladder whereas I think that's shifted now Yeah, and I, I think Richmond justifiably could make finals and potentially win one yeah. from my observations I, th- I think that looked bloody good to be honest yeah, um, similar to Collingwood so and they beat Collingwood didn't they think so yeah beat them by about five goals so Another hard team to get a read on. But the team that I think is the most frustrating Bush has got to be Hawthorne. Yeah. Would you agree with that? Do you think there's... I don't think there's a side who, with such a vast difference between their best and worst this year. Uh, I still feel Port, but yeah, okay. Hawthorne's sort of... I guess it's different it. because I feel like Hawthorne jumps up and down, whereas I think Port started poorly and have got yeah. the shit together a little bit. That, that's the way, way I thought of Hawthorne. But they've beaten Brisbane this year. They smashed Port, and I know Port was struggling, but they looked good as well. They won by 64 points. They've beaten Geelong this year. They challenged Melbourne. At the same time, they got annihilated by the Gold Coast Suns, annihilated by St Kilda, who at, the, you know, at that point of the season, it wasn't clear who was better yeah. than those two teams. And then that bad loss to Essendon, who have been really mm. poor this year. I think, I'm not saying there's a long-term concern for Hawthorne here, but I think, I think of their fans and I just think, Man, you just watch a Hawthorne game not knowing what's going to happen. <laughs> you know, uh, you, more so than any other team, I reckon. That was my my nomination for them. Yeah, I'm a bit worried about them this week. The Hawks, they're always, yeah? not too worried, but they're sort of like a team where you can't take the piss. I agree. I and not you know Fremantle are way better than Hawthorne, but so are Brisbane. <laughs> yeah, especially wet weather potentially coming. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's true. Yeah. That's true. I've I, been I, saying Flag Mantle just needs an Indonesian rain shaman. That's all we need. <laughs> Keep the rain away. Yeah, it's funny. Um, I remember in, uh, not to drag this back to the Eagles, but I remember in 18, we had that mid part of the season where games are tripping, like wetter because it's, you know, the middle part of the heart of winter and we fell off a cliff as well. Yeah. And I think there were other factors as well, but I just think it makes sense that the WA teams are a little bit weaker in the wet. Yeah. yeah. Um, that being said, I don't know off the top of my head how Hawthorne play in the wet. But I don't feel like they're a strong contested side, and I feel like yeah. I feel like you guys will be all right, to be honest. Yeah, but, I think we'll be okay. But, but it, like we we have just highlighted all the reasons why Hawthorne could show up and play well. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So um, I think you'll be all right. But yeah, uh, yeah. So just getting back to my tears, I had the Suns and the and the Power, and then below that the teams. Uh, one of them is Hawthorne, we just yep. talked about, and Adelaide, who are grouped together as teams that look good on their day. But I'm really not really contenders. Would you agree with that? I don't yep. Think they're I had contenders. those two in their own category where yes. I sort of said they miss finals, but it's like optimistically, like their fans are optimistic for the future. Yes. But they're going to miss finals sort of mm. tier. I, I had those two I there. I like Adelaide a lot at the moment. Yeah. They're, they're a good team to watch. Uh, and and I, I've said this a lot, but I think they're entertaining despite being young and, you know, with the talent they've drafted in recent years, I don't think, um, you know, I don't think we've ever looked at a draft as, as, as draft followers and gone, gee, Adelaide killed that. Uh, Do you know what I mean? Other than, you know, still Thorpe at pick two. Uh, but they, they're unconventional. You know, I remember Chase Jones, um, mm-hmm. Ned McHenry, um, yep. these guys, you, they, when the draft comes and goes, you're like, oh, interesting choice. Yeah, yep. fair enough. Yeah, cool. And yet, 
their ascension despite all their adversity over the last couple of years I think it's as a team of a uh, fan of a fellow rebuilding team I think they're genuinely a team I want to be like yeah I was gonna to make the million Fremantle comparison so yeah. far as podcast I'd sort of say they're sort of like on that path where we're on they're just a couple of years behind like they've brought mm. in their new coach that's bringing in it's going to take a few years for him to build those layers like mm. I said with JL Matthew Nix is doing that yep. they're getting in the talent to execute that plan yep like Josh Rochelle is a good example. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's true. Okay, so... It's and, like, that was always my big thing, shitting on them, gone. they need an A grader. Yeah. He's a potential A grader. Mm. Yeah. Um, and then one of their best players is, a you know, a delisted free yeah. agent from Brisbane, yeah. Ben Keys. Yeah. He's um, a borderline A grader, I'd yeah. say, at this point. 100%. And then Tex Walker coming out of nowhere. Even Rory like, Laird's having a great year yeah. in the midfield. He's averaging, like, I saw this in terms of best two-way mids. He, him and Brayshaw are the two guys averaging, like, about 30 and over six tackles. Is that right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty compelling. Um, no, but I think as far as a, a, assessing a rebuilding coach and how it's going, I think Adelaide are, I think they're an yeah. A plus to be honest. Yeah. Like again, uh, Rochelle is a star, but um, you know it's it, there's not clear like there's no Jason Horn Francis on that list. There's no um, uh, who's another team that's taken a high pick. It's game or Sam Walsh yeah. you know, at the time with Carlton. Yeah. Um, it, it, other than Rochelle, there's no like clear. Oh, he's going to be a Jet, but yeah. as a team. I find them very entertaining to watch. I think they play with really good spirit and um, and I feel confident that they're going to be a good team eventually. Whether they're not win the flag, obviously we don't know. But yeah, um, yeah. so long, a full stop on a very sort of long and rambling mm. point was that uh, I think Adelaide are tracking really, really well whilst not yep. being a finals contender this year. Yeah, they should be optimistic for the future, but this year's just not it. Yeah, that's right. They're a year away from being a year away maybe or even next yeah, year. that's true. Yeah, good call. Uh, and, and being a... Um, big Adelaide team in a two-team town, there's the chance they recruit players and, and, they, and they expedite the process yeah. a little bit. You know, Lukosius and Rankin, for instance. Horn Francis, to be yeah. honest. Um, yeah, they, they've got that strength as well with the rebuild. Yeah. Um, and then below those teams, I think it's fair to suggest I've got GWS and Essendon sort of on their own level as being way better than the worst teams. Yeah, that's reasonable, but I did lump them all together as you the lump plebs. Them all together? That's I, fair. I had to put them... The plebe years for GWS Essendon yeah. and North Melbourne and West Coast more obviously. Yeah, but yeah, those I'd agree that Essendon and GWS are a lot more talented teams, but based on their pre-season expectations, everything I think they deserve to be called plebs. Yeah, in my well, pleb category. That's right. I suppose in overall quality, there's not a huge gap between the four teams when you group them together. Mm. I, I think for me, Adelaide and Hawthorne on their day have actually looked like good teams. Yeah, um, it might be very patchy, uh, like patchy, um, sort of frequency yeah. that's what I'm trying to say uh, we don't see it every week we see it yeah. every third week but by contrast G- GWS and Essendon admittedly GWS annihilated Adelaide I think but other than that I think the contrast between these two teams is I think those teams GWS and Essendon have been really yeah. disappointing it's obviously yeah. because they made finals last year yeah. who do you think has been the most disappointing out of those two so GWS and Essendon GWS because I yeah. even looking at my round four I still had them pretty optimistically mm. ranked it back then and they've mm. just continued to be atrocious they have yeah and obviously they've lost a coach in yep. that time so they, they've recognised but I think that. that might alleviate some of the issues from what I yes. from what I could say a lot of GWS friends I know wanted Leon Cameron gone they felt like he, his strategy didn't hold up and mm. underutilised the talent they had he yeah. was moving the magnets around too much trying to it's not the guys uncommon. were inconsistent and couldn't find form. True. It's not uncommon to see teams, you know, improve after a new coach comes in. There's so many, you know, theories of why that could mm. happen. I don't think it's ever really a new coach is just a genius and, and turns it around. Yeah, certainly like, not. I think there's factors that like, you know, players realising they don't know where they sit with the new coach and yeah. their, their motivation goes up. But I think in the weeks following Leon Cameron, uh, I'm, I'm messy on the timeline here, but I feel like we did see a bit of an improvement. A little bit, away. I think. Like yeah. Against um, Brisbane, they keep eight yeah. goals in a quarter. Um, I think they did similar to West Coast as well. Because I think one of the things was the new McVeigh, isn't it? I it think? is, yeah. yeah, he, yeah. I think one of the first things he told the guys is, I'm going to stop fidgeting with the magnets. You're going to be yeah. playing where you're going to play. That's your role. Yeah. You're going to be like, con- get think- consistent in that role rather than guys not knowing one week if they plan on the half forward flank or mm. in the guts or... Yeah, the Stephen Keneally effect. Yeah. Yeah, very true. Yeah. Um, no, they've been poor. 